So let's go ahead and get started. Because of such um, great participation up there on the board, I've already put your notes into the chat box. So obviously go ahead and start opening those notes up as I go through everything here. All right, so let's take a look at our brain stretch. So an ion that has an overall positive charge is called, and I gave you a little hint here and he's winking at you, is a cation. Absolutely true. Yes, you all have gotten that. So it is a cation. Those of are that are negatively overall charged is called an anion. We relate to that as like anti kind of begins the same way. And we know that anti is kind of something that has like a negative connotation. But cation is what I'm looking for for today. So excellent job up there. All right, let's go ahead and get started on our um, announcements. Remember, Class Connect sessions are recorded and distributed for learning purposes. Please do not put any personal information or information of others into the chat box for your protection and the protection of others. Make sure you're school appropriate and respectful at all times. And like I always say is make sure you are participating. I can't stress that enough. The more you participate, the more you get out of class. The more you get out of class, the better it is and the higher your grade is. So make sure that you are participating. Even if you don't understand something, the more you participate, the better an understanding you will get from it. So, all right. So let's go ahead. I'm just making sure I have everybody so far. Let's go ahead and take a look at our calendar. So welcome to week four of our 12 weeks together. So we are right here at eight more weeks. I cannot believe it. It is day 18 of our 61 day adventure. It is Monday, April 8th. And we're gonna take a look at our two E notes called on isotopes. Now on Friday, we talked about ions. So today we're gonna actually talk about isotopes, which we have some kind of prior knowledge to, but um, we're gonna go in depth on what an isotope is and how to figure out the overall abundance of a particular um, element. Now, just a reminder in our heads up, our unit two element exam is due Thursday, April 18th. You still have plenty of time. You have a week from this Thursday. So right now you have about a week and a half, not bad at all. So um, just make sure that you are getting that and making sure that you are looking at the lessons and going back if you are getting stuck on any of those questions. Um, just a um, reminder and a heads up to this week, it's going to be a little bit different. I had to change um, our support sessions a little bit um, just because um, my son who is my younger son, he has autism and he has to, his therapy had changed. So I had to um, change my support sessions to in order to meet the, um, get him dropped off at therapy. So with that being said, Mondays is still going to be the same. Okay. So Mondays is still going to be the same. Whereas Tuesdays, um, you will, um, our particular support session has changed to 3.30 to 4, okay? Um, so unfortunately, I cannot do it any earlier, so it's from 3.30 to 4. And then on Wednesdays, um, it's going to be a a kind of bit of office hours. No worries, Layal, no worries about uh, kind of a little bit of an office hours for everybody in case you need anything or ask a, you need to ask a question. I'm there for you. So at 2.45 to 3.45. So everything um, is kind of, um, like I said, changed a little bit. Um, those are the only effects on you all. So um, just let me know again if you need anything or um, if you need to clarify that. But if you see it up there in the... Um, on your schedule, then that's the correct time. So again, I apologize. I did have to change that, but it, you'll have the same amount of time. It's just at different times. Also, this week is going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to try to get in as many support sessions I can, but we are in WASC. That is a big, big accreditation for our school. So, um, you know, we'll do very well, but I do have to go to some meetings, so um, just kind of be aware of that. Look at your schedule. That's all I'm asking is just kind of be observant of your schedule, and if you need that support, let me know. Also, you also have my um, cell phone. You have my email. By all means, use it. Let me know if, I need, if you need help with anything, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be learning today. Today, we're going to define those isotopes and ions. What is the difference between those two? And we're going to explain that. We're going to calculate atomic mass of an isotope. We've already uh, calculated atomic mass, but now we're going to take it one step further and talk about when we um, calculate for an isotope. And then, then we're going to explain how the average atomic mass of an element is determined and Again, identify the most common isotopes of an element. And we're going to do that by using what we call the rounding rule. If we know how to round, that's going to be something that's going to be really, really, really easy for us. 
All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at our famous slide here. I'm gonna give everybody, again, another 20 seconds to get those notes up. In the meantime, I'm just gonna quickly go over our attendance to make sure I have everybody into that attendance. So 20 seconds up on the clock. Go, go, go. Get those hands up. Thank you, thank you. All righty. Excellent job, everybody. Excellent job. I got just one more person to grab there. Good morning, Jason. How are you? All right, let's go ahead and um, just check in with a few people. Again, once you have those notes opened up with, go ahead and um, raise your hand. Thank you so much, Tushan. I saw you popping up there. Beautiful job. All right, so let's go ahead and um, take a look here. Still looking for Zadine, Kitaly, Michael, and Mateo. Lizzie, good morning to you. Jasmine and Jasmine R. Um, Jason and Isis, Emmanuel. Uh, let's see, Gavin and doo -doo 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 -doo. Desiree, Edgar, Chris, and Cadence, Amir. Just make sure you get those hands up as soon as you get there. Thank you, Edgar. Thank you, Jasmine R. Nice job, Tushan. I saw you popping up there. Excellent job, Lizzie. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and move on and talk about some isotopes. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing first. First of all, let's go ahead and review what we've learned so far about our subatomic particles. Again, very important here to know those subatomic particles, aka the parts of the atom here. So let's review what is the main role of protons in an atom. I want you to grab your... Um, pointer tool. Everybody has that available to them. I want you to grab your pointer tool. Which one? Is it having to do with bonding? Ooh, identity, stability. What is the main role of protons? Ooh, look at that. I have four Bs up there. Ooh, let's see, five Bs possibly. Ooh, let's get six, six, six Bs up there swarming on that. Excellent. Yeah, I agree with you. Excellent job, my little Bs. Back to the honey hive you go. And Oh, I'm going to clear this out. I think somebody, um, Penn, got crazy on them. No, not a problem there. But yeah, it is going to be the identity of the atom. Remember, if anything happens to a proton, if I add or subtract or take away anything like that, you are going to change the identity of the atom. You're going to have a completely different atom um, if you change anything with the protons. Now, ooh, okay, my little bees come back out. Find the honey. Partons have a what kind of charge? Ooh, there you go. Excellent. I see it. Buzz around. Buzz around. Yes, it does. It definitely has a positive charge right there. Beautiful job. So positive charge. And how we remember that, I'm going to go ahead and send you back to the honey hive real fast. How we remember that is obviously protons starts with a P and so does positive. P positive and protons um, all begin with a P. So that's how we remember that. Now, again, last question, last two questions here. A proton is located where? Where is that proton located? Is it located in the nucleus or orbiting the nucleus? Ooh, look at those little bees. All right, there's like five little bees out there. It's a swarm, six. Excellent, excellent. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome job, everybody. So, it... Proton is located in the nucleus, so we know that that is where it's located. It's not orbiting the nucleus because that is our electrons. So now, a proton has a mass of what? Oh, look at my little bees. They little buzz, buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent job. So my protons there have an AMU of about one. Okay, one AMU. Excellent job. Back to the honey hive you go again to rest. So let's go ahead and grab our first one out of the gate here. Number two, you are going to go ahead and um, lock in your answer for um, the four questions, identity, positive, in the nucleus, and one AMU. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to do that because we have a lot to do here. So 30 seconds up on the clock. Go, go, go. All right, just checking in with a few of us. Amir. Chris and Desiree, Edgar and Evelyn, Gavin and, uh, let's see, Emmanuel, Jason, Jasmine L, Kaylin, Logan, Layal. Perfect. I'm seeing some people moving up there. Beautiful job, everybody. <clears throat> All 
Mateo and Maya, Michael and Kitaly and Zadine. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Kaylin. Nice job, Gavin. All right, hopefully we are all following along, so let's go ahead and move on. So now that we understand and have an idea of the basics of what a proton does, let's review what an isotope versus an ion is. They are very different things. A lot of people get them really confused and kind of blend them together, but they're completely different. Let's first of all talk about an isotope. Now, an isotope is having to do with a neutron. Okay, that's all an isotope is, is that neutrons that do not affect the identity. Remember, the only thing that affects the identity is going to be the um, proton. Okay, now, since we're talking about neutrons, they do change the mass of the atom because a neutron does have a mass about of one AMU. So if we have more um, neutrons than protons, we're going to have a bigger or heavier atom and vice versa. If we have less, then obviously our weight will be less of an atom. It cannot um, affect charge because again, neutrons are neutral, we remember that. But these are what we call isotopes. So isotopes are having to do with the neutrons. For example, in order to find out the atomic mass, we're gonna add the protons plus the neutrons. That gives us the weight of the atom. So if I look at hydrogen and I look at and say that hydrogen has one proton and zero neutrons, then I know that hydrogen is going to have a one AMU. I'm just adding those two numbers up. That's all I'm doing. Now, if hydrogen has an isotope in which hydrogen is has one proton and one neutron, well, what's one plus one? One plus one is two. Obviously, you could see that the weight of this atom has changed with the addition of a neutron. Okay, so again, isotopes have nothing to do with protons, have nothing to do with electrons. They're only having to do with neutrons. It does not, uh, it does affect the mass of the atom, but it does not affect the charge and it does not affect the identity. That's the only thing isotopes are. Now, let's look at the ions. Now, we talked about ions in depth on Friday. So now, when we take a look at uh, um, ions, we are actually talking about electrons. Again, do not have um, any effect on the identity of the atom. The only thing that does is the proton. The only thing that electrons do change is they change the charge of the atom, okay? Whether an atom is more positive, a cation, or whether an atom is more negative, an anion, okay? It does not affect the mass of the atom because, again, electrons do not have a mass. They are at zero AMU, so it doesn't affect the um, mass of that atom. So we call these ions. Now, remember how we f figured out the charge. The charge of an atom is the number of protons plus the number of electrons. But the thing is, is that remember, the number of electrons is always going to be a negative number. That means I'm going to have to use those integer rules. For example, when you take a look here, I have 11 plus a negative 10, we have to use those integer rules. And when I do that, again, I am going to subtract. When I have unlike signs, when I have a positive and I have a negative, I actually subtract and take the sign of the bigger number. So when I subtract, I get one. And if you take if you take a look, 11 is a, or I did this wrong, I know. Um, 11 is the bigger number, so it would just be a positive one. Okay, that's how you figure out the charge. Let's go ahead and figure out the charge for oxygen. Same thing. I'm going to add the number of protons. They're positive. And then I'm going to add the number of electrons. Remember, number of electrons is going to be negative. And in this case, 8 plus a negative 10 is going to be a subtraction problem. Now, if you want to, you could say... Um, 10 minus 8, that's fine. You just have to go back and make sure you have the correct sign. So if I did that, 10 minus 8, I get 2, right? But here's the thing. Which is the bigger number? 10 is my bigger number. So 10 is a negative number. So I'm going to come out with a negative 2 charge. Does that make sense how to do that? All right, so that's just the review of these two things. 
Now, let's go ahead and take a look at practicing changing neutrons and changing electrons. Now, what we're going to do is what does the changing of neutrons do and what's that called? And then changing electrons, what does changing electrons do and what does that call it? Each one of these terms is going to have two answers. I'm going to give you your whiteboard tools. I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to go ahead and mark my board up. Graffiti it up. You can use your line tool. You can use your highlighter tool. You can use your um, pen tool. does not matter to me. And it does not matter what color you use. Pick your favorite color. So with that being said, 15 seconds up on the clock. Remember, you are using um, each one of these is going to be two. What are you changing in neutrons? What are you changing in electrons? And then obviously, what is it called? All right, here we go. 15 seconds up on the clock. Yes, good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put our whiteboard tools on hold. There we go. Looking for what I see so far, so good. I'm super, super proud of you. Excellent job. So let's go ahead and, like I said, let's lock in number three. I'm going to go over number three, but as I'm going over it, obviously lock it into your answers. So if we change neutrons, okay, if we change neutrons, we are changing the atomic mass because neutrons do have a mass, right? Now, if we also change neutrons, this is a result of called an isotope. Now, if we're changing electrons, we're actually changing the atom's charge, okay? Has nothing to do with the mass because electrons do not have a mass. So it does nothing to do with the weight of that atom. And when we change the electrons, that results in what we call an ion. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give you just another, let's see. <clears throat> I'll give you another 30 seconds to get this one in. All righty, here we are, here we are. So make sure you get those hands up there. Again, once you are finished, make sure those hands go up there so I know you are good to go. I don't want to leave anybody at the bus stop, so make sure that you hop on my bus. So raise your hand when you are finished. Excellent job. Nice job, Evelyn and Cheyenne. Nat, I see you up there. Good job, Lizzie and Mateo. Excellent. All right, so let's take a look. Zadine and Kitaly, Michael and Maya. Uh, let's see, Mariah. Good morning, Mariah. How are you? Uh, let's see, Layal and Logan. Kaylin and Jasmine L. Nice, Logan. I saw you popping up there. Um, Jasmine R. Jason and Emmanuel. Gavin and Edgar. Chris and Cadence. Alex, make sure you get those hands up there. For those friends that are just coming in, just make sure you get those notes opened up with. I can always go back at the end of class, so just pick up right here at number three. Thank you, Kaylin. I saw you up there. Nice job, Cadence. Last call, Zadine, Zadine, Kitaly, Kitaly, Michael, Michael, Maya, Maya, Mariah, Mariah, Layal, Layal, Jasmine, 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 Jason, Jason, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Gavin, Gavin, Edgar, Edgar, and... Yeah. Chris, Chris, Alex, Alex. Beautiful. Nice job, everybody. Let's go ahead and move on here and now kind of identify how to calculate the atomic mass. Again, practice here. This is all practice because we've already done this. Now, what is the atomic mass of an isotope of rubidium with 15 neutrons? So we know that we have an isotope because we have probably more neutrons than we do um, protons. That's an isotope. Anything you have more of or less of, it's going to be an isotope. So I'm going to go ahead and underline how many um, neutrons we have. We have 50. Now, next thing I'm going to ask is, what is the atomic number for rubidium? Remember, the atomic number and the number of protons is the same thing. So what is the number of protons does rubidium have? Let me know in the chat box there. Rubidium. Good, Connor. Good, Michaela. I'm seeing some different faces. Good, Jackie. Excellent. Nice, Nicholas and Evelyn. Yes, yes, yes. Nice job, everybody. It's going to be 37. Good job, Hope. Nice correction. So it's going to be 37. Okay. Remember, atomic number equals the number of protons. So in this case, it's 37. Now, once I know this information, pretty easy to find the atomic mass. 
All I have to do at this point is literally just add these two numbers up, number of protons and number of neutrons. So if I have the number of protons at 37 and the number of neutrons at 50, what do I get? Yeah, Jackie, excellent. Nice job. Nice job, Nicholas. Nice job, Cheyenne and Michaela. Yes. Yes, I agree with you. That is going to be 87, okay? So our number of our atomic mass for rubidium is going to be 87. Now, when you put it into your notes, and I'm going to show you in just a second here, you are going to put it in on the line. I believe it is a line plus units, so I'm going to tell you right now how to do that, okay? Now, before we even do that or before we even lock in our answer, okay, I want to tell you how we would write this. When, if you were in a science lab, you would actually write this as rubidium and we would put 87, okay? That is telling me that rubidium is an isotope and it is going to be, the weight is going to be 87, okay? Excuse me, sorry about that. All right, so let's go ahead and grab number four and I'm gonna pop it up into my notes right now. Let me go ahead and screen share with you just so you know how to, um, Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, Logan. <laughs> I hope, knocking on wood, I do not get sick. Both my kids had a cold this past weekend. Ugh, ugh. All right, so here is number four. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 87. Our units are going to be AMU, AMU, all right? So go ahead and lock in your answer. I'm going to give you about 25 seconds to get that one in, okay? 25 seconds. Alrighty, just to kind of clarify, we just put 87 in the answers box. AMU goes into the units box. And I'll go ahead and put the units into the um, chat box there. For those of you who are using alternate devices or um, have a little difficulty seeing it, you could always copy and paste it right into the units box. I am cool with that. All right, Zadine and Kitali, Victoria, Valerie. Good morning, Valerie. How are you? Uh, let's see, <clears throat> to Sean and Taylor, good morning to ya. Alex and Cadence, Chris and Evelyn, Gavin and Emmanuel, Jason and Jasmine, Jasmine, double Jasmine, dad Jasmine square, Kaylin and Lizzie, lay all, Mariah, make sure we get those answers up there. <clears throat> All right, so again, it's going to be 87 goes into the answer box and then AMU goes into the units box. I have those units there into the chat box there. Excellent, let's go ahead and move on. We wanna make sure we get through everything. We got a lot of stuff to do. So let's take a look at calculating this on our own. This should, again, this isn't our first rodeo with this stuff. So again, hopefully you're able to understand how to do that. I will help you set it up. After that, you are doing the math. If you want to check your answer with me, please check your answer with me in the question and answers box. Please, no answers in the public chat. No answers in the public chat. I know you've got this. So what is the atomic mass of an isotope of silicon with 15 neutrons? So first of all, let's go identify where silicon is. Silicon is going to be right here. Everybody, how many protons does silicon have? You can put that in the main chat. How many protons does silicon have? Excellent, excellent. Look at all those people up there. Woo wee. It is going to be 14, okay? So with that being said, I am now going to just put it into my equation, which is protons plus neutrons. I'm gonna go ahead and put my protons 14, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my neutrons of 15 neutrons, and then I'm going to solve my problem. Remember, no answers in the main chat. Always check your answers with me in the public chat. Our units are going to be AMU, okay? Just like before, if you take a look at number four, it's gonna be the kind of the same setup. You put the number in the answers box and the units is AMU. All right, with that being said, I am going to give you 30 seconds to get this one in. I will check, 
um, in the chat box right now. So 30 seconds up on the clock. Raise your hand when you are finished. All right. Go, go, go. Connor, you are correct. Cheyenne, you are correct. Mason, you are correct. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nat, you are correct. Tushan, you are correct. Evelyn, you are correct. Kaylin, you are correct. Hope, you are correct. Louis, you are correct. Lizzie, you are correct. Nicholas, you are correct. Victoria, you are correct. Nice job, everybody. Again, when you are finished, make sure you raise those hands. I'm seeing a lot of people who are correct. Just make sure you raise your hand. Good, excellent. Zadine Kittily, nice job, Victoria. Nice job, Mateo and Luis. Nice job, Lizzie. Excellent, Alden, Alex, Cadence, Chris, Edgar and Gavin, Emmanuel, Isis, Jackie and Jason, my um, Jasmine Squared, Kaylin and Logan, Leal, Mariah, Maya and Michael, Taylor. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Isis and Jackie. Nice job, Cadence and Lizzie. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead now and move on and talk a little bit more about how to calculate an average atomic mass when you are talking about an isotope. Now, the atomic mass is on the periodic table is not a whole number. And we talked a little bit about this before when we talked about, um, you know, why isn't it a whole number? Well, the reason for that is because that particular atom has isotopes. And that number at the very bottom, the atomic mass, is an average of all those isotopes that occur naturally here on Earth, okay? So obviously when you take an average of something, there is going to be a decimal place. There's going to be a decimal point. So it actually takes, takes into account the abundance of each isotope. Often it is the closest to the most common isotope. What I mean by that is if we take a look here and we round in zero is less than five, we keep 12 the same. So that means that carbon 12 is probably the most abundant isotope here on Earth. It's the most common isotope on Earth. We're going to talk a little bit about that in just a moment. But for right now, what I want you to do is I want you to grab number six. The word is abundance. A-B-U-N-D-A-N-C-E. And I'm going to give you just about 25 seconds. Yeah, Mariah, I can definitely. Um, well, Mariah, that when you um, the one on the back side is a, a complete on your own. OK, but I will go back. Can you remind me after class? I don't mind going back at all. OK, perfect. Thanks, Mariah. So let's go ahead and grab number six. I'm going to give you 25 seconds. Raise your hand when you are finished. Go, go, go. All righty, just checking. Again, the word is abundance, A-B-U-N-D-A-N-C-E. Alex and Chris, Edgar and Evelyn, Gavin, Emmanuel, Isis, Jason, Jasmine, L, Kaylin and Luis, Leal, Mariah, Mateo and Maya, Michael. Nice job. Nice, nice, everybody. Nice. I'm seeing those hands go up there. All right, now let's go ahead and find the average atomic mass of a certain um, atom, okay? And again, it's an average, okay? So we're going to do a little bit of um, kind of conversion and stuff, but uh, don't worry, I'm going to help you out through this, okay? So we're going to take a look at chlorine, okay? We have two isotopes of chlorine, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. Chlorine-35 makes about 75% of Earth's natural chlorine, whereas the isotope of for chlorine, chlorine-37 is uh, the other 25. Okay, so there's 100% there's of our chlorine here on Earth is through chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. Now, in order to find the average atomic mass, I have got to go ahead and put a um, 
put 75% into a decimal. Now, I could do this a couple of different ways. I can go ahead and put it into a fraction where it's saying that's 75 over 100, and then I can divide it out. Or what I can do is I can bounce my decimal place. This is probably the easiest to think about when you are looking at percentages. It, ha it can work with all percentages. Let me tell you right now, it works with all percentages. When you are in a percentage, you need to bounce your decimal place to the left two times. Well, you might say, well, Mrs. Paul, there is no decimal place there. What are you talking about? That's craziness. Well, you have to kind of imagine that there is an imaginary decimal point right here, okay? When you think of that, and like I said, it's a percent, so you'd only bounce it twice. That's it, only twice to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and go one and two. Guess what? Now I have it into a decimal, and my decimal is 0 0.75. You can even do that if you go ahead and divide 75 divided by 100. Put it into your calculator. You're going to get this number. But I thought I'd teach you the easy way, okay? So we also got to go ahead, and we got to put 25 into a decimal. Again, do the same thing. Imaginary decimal place right there behind that 5 right there. There we go. And I'm just going to bounce it twice, 1 and 2. That's right, Chloe. I get a decimal of 0 0.25. If you want to prove that, you can go ahead and divide out 25 divided by 100. Again, working from top to bottom in a calculator, you're going to get the same number. Okay. So now that I have put these into a decimal, much easier to work with, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to um, find the average. So what I do here is I'm going to go ahead and put 35 here on the line. Okay, and I got 35 because I am going to say that it's going to be chlorine 35. 35 is going to be how many AMUs that chlorine weighs, 35 AMUs. And I'm going to go ahead then and put this number here because it is 75% of Earth's natural chlorine. So I'm going to put 0 0.75 right there. Now, when I do this, I'm going to simply multiply these two across. I'm going to multiply 35 times 0 0.75. What do I get? What do I get? Good, Connor. I like it. What else do I get? Good, Michaela. Yes. Yes, good, Chloe. Yeah, I get 26.25. Now, I'm going to keep that number right there, okay, because I'm going to go ahead then and find out the um, for chlorine 37, which is 25% of the Earth's natural chlorine. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and put 37 right here, and I'm going to multiply it by the 0 0.25, we'll put it right there. And now I'm just going to multiply 37 pi times 0 0.25. When I do that, what do I get? Good there, Chloe. Nice, Michaela. Good, Jackie. I get 9.25. Excellent. So now that I have, oh, I just put these two numbers the same color. I didn't want to do that. So now that I have these two numbers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the average. So when I find the average or when I add these up, Okay, when I add those up, I am going to get a number for that. What is the number do I get? What number do I get? When I add 26.25 up and I go and 9.25. Good, good, Michaela. Evelyn, you have it. I just think you um, forgot you put the decimal place in the wrong spot, but yes, good, excellent. Good, yeah. So I get this number of 35.5. <laughs> yeah, no worries, Evelyn. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I know what you were talking about. You get 35.5, okay? So this is going to be our answer. 
that is the average of the chlorine here, the abundance of the chlorine here on Earth. That's my atomic mass for chlorine. So let's go ahead and lock our answers in. Now, when we do that, I'm going to do again, do the same thing. 35.5 is going to go into the answers column. AMU is going to go into the units. Go ahead and lock your answer in. It should look just like this up on the board. Go, go, go. I'm going to give you about 25 seconds. We're going to go over a little bit in time. I apologize on that one, just simply because we have a couple of, um, of things that we're going to look at. Real easy, but again, just uh, we're going to go over a little bit. All right, beautiful. I am going to keep going on, so if you need me to come back at the end of class, by all means, please let me know in the main chat. All right, so let's take a look at the rounding the atomic mass. So which isotope of strontium is likely the most common here on Earth? How I figure that out is I'm going to round. I'm going to round the number. Uh, I'm going to round the number seven. And in order to do that, I got to look at the number that is right after the decimal place. In this case, six is greater than five, right? So what do you think is going to happen to that seven? Is it going to stay the same or is it going to go up? Yes, good, Chloe. It's going to round up. So which one of these is going to be 88? A, B, C, or D? Yes, good, Jackie. So D right here is going to be the most common here on Earth. Okay, you always do the rounding rule. Go ahead and lock in your answer for number eight. Go ahead and lock in your answer for number eight. I'll give you about 25 more seconds to get that one. Nice job there, Nat. All right, now let's go ahead and do another one. This is a complete on your own, so I'm gonna help you out with this one, okay? So let's take a look at this one really fast. Remember, I am going to take a look at the two. In order to like take a look at the two, I'm going to look at that zero next to it. What is that zero going to tell me? Am I going to keep this number the same or am I going to go up? Remember, it's less than five, four, so it's it's less than five. So what do you think is going to happen? Good, Lizzie. Good. Go ahead and lock your answers in. Yes, I'm going to keep that the same. Good. Find the one that's the same. So then I go ahead and I take a look at Yes, good, Evelyn. Go ahead and lock your answer. Again, this is a complete on your own, so check with me in the question and answers box if you want to um, check with me. Yes, Lizzie, that is correct. I'm going to give you all about uh, 25 seconds just to lock your answer in on this one. 25 seconds. Raise your hand when you are finished. You keep the two the same, so which one is going to be? Good, Tushan. Good, Connor. Good, Nicholas. Good, Cheyenne. Nat, did you make that correction? Good, Luis. Yes. Good, Kaylin. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. If you take a look, you said sulfur 33. Is it sulfur 33? Was it sulfur three? If I take a look at that zero, yeah, good, good, Nat. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, excellent job, everybody. Super proud of you. So let me go ahead and get you out of here. If you need me to go back, let me know. I'll be happy to. No worries, Louise. Let me know in the main chat, Louise, okay? All right, so with that being said, Remember, today we had defined isotopes and ions and saw the difference in them. We calculated some atomic masses of isotopes real easy. Then we um, explained how the average atomic mass of an element is determined, and then we saw the most common isotopes just right now. With that being said, if you can, go ahead and submit your notes. Once you've submitted your notes, you are free to go. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you back.